people who get so willingly to people like me. It's plain to see with people like you. Folk have a better break to take to people like me. Your caring smile makes working worthwhile. When pressure's on you, carry on through every trial. You're really great. I appreciate you've got the goods for what it takes to make people like me. Well, hello there. You're watching my world, Joy's World, on community television, TVS. Aren't we lucky to have community television? So many of us have so much fun on this program. It's really lovely. And I have a poem here that was written by one of my very good friends, Alan Clark. You may have seen Alan. He's been on um, some of the shows before. But tonight I'm just reading his poem. And it's about a piano tuner. Now, this poem intrigued me because my husband, who died some years ago, was actually a piano tuner. Not only was he a piano tuner, but he was a very successful piano player. Um, but he would never play a piano without first having very carefully tuned it. He had perfect pitch and he was terribly particular about the piano that he was about to play being in tune. And in a little while you'll see a picture of him when he's actually tuning a piano because our piano at home was the most frequently tuned piano I have ever seen in my life. But this was not written by me, this was written by Alan and Alan was actually in another country. He was in Shanghai at the time and he was sitting in a coffee lounge watching a, t a tuner, a piano, a piano being tuned and this is what the poem's about. Let's have a listen. In the peaceful surround of the coffee lounge, sitting in a comfortable chair, I'm due back at work at half past one so there's more than an hour to spare. At the end of the lounge, there's a bookshelf where many red books on mahogany stand, framed pictures of horses, strategically placed, and gem-studded dagger from some distant land. In front of the bookshelf, a beautiful sight, many coats of French polish, so shiny and bright, white ivory keys that can play a soft tune as sweet and romantic as any full moon. And there stands the tuner, with spanner in hand, carefully nursing pianos so grand, meticulous as he checks voltage and sound, adjusting a string if perfection's not found. How deeply he concentrates checking each chord. I watch for an hour and never feel bored, starting at a low note and working towards high, enlisting experience, mind, ear and eye. Nothing distracts him. He's deeply engrossed. Each string must be perfect. He tries his utmost. I watch his cool face, almost feel what he's thinking. No time for eating, talking or drinking. My stroll comes soon with his hands so steady. Lounge will be full, so all must be ready. His ear will pick up the most minute defect that all those who listen might never detect. And after each melody, he'll take a pause. At the end, he will bow and accept the applause. 
and as they shout encore and see Maestro smile, let us just think of the tuna for a while. He's very important, but audience won't see who will sing his praise. Perhaps none but me. In the case of my husband, whose name was Denny, the actual maestro was also the piano tuner, because not only did he tune the piano, but he also played. There ought to be more people like